Yeah, we, we're sitting here talking to DeMarcus Ware, nine-time Pro Bowler uh, and Super Bowl champ uh, with the Denver Broncos as well. So give us some um, some stories. When you went to Denver, again, you left Dallas. Uh, you thought you were going to end your career in Dallas. You go to right. Denver. You get to play with Peyton Manning. Like, how was that experience like in, in going to win that Super Bowl? You know, it, it was crazy, man, because, you know, leaving from Dallas, there was a lot of Chiefs. I'm being honest with you. You had mm-hmm. T.O. You had Romo. You got Whitten. You got me. You had, like, a lot of dogs on defense, right? Everybody was a Chief. Everybody had the star, and they wanted to etch their name in the star, mm-hmm. right? When I went to Denver, it was a lot different. I had a lot of young cats. I had Vaughn Miller, Malik. You know, Derek Wolf. I had Peyton on the other side, which was an older guy at the time, but everybody else was young. You know, CJ mm-hmm. Anderson, like that. And so they're playing pool, they're chilling, <laughs> they're video games, yeah. they got the barber in their haircuts. I'm looking like, man, we, we never go win no games here. You mm. know, because I'm so used to everybody. When we was at the facility, it was formal, it was Football. straight up. When I left, guess what? Everybody got kids, they gone. We, mm-hmm. we, we didn't hang out. We got the, the moms and um, the family coming to go and eat every week. Yeah. Like, so y'all got these food trucks outside on Thursday every day and all the families coming. I didn't know exactly what they were doing, but they were like building team camaraderie, man. Like mm-hmm. it was one of those things where like after the first, third, fourth, fifth game, like you want to play even more for that guy beside you because you mm-hmm. knew what his kids were. You know, you <laughs> know he's staying there all day, right? And then you know, playing with Peyton, he was like one of those guys where if you say, hey, man, I got a, um, I got this this show that I'm going to be doing tonight, you're going to pull up, he would come. Mm-hmm. And he will be so out of place. In right. The- <laughs> where, where we at. But guess what? <laughs> he will come. And I'm like, shit, it's fucking Peyton K. He actually yeah. came, came to the show. Good to so it, it was one of them things, man, like, it was like do or die. Like, everything, everybody was together. I think, I know that's why we won that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Hey man, let me tell you something. To be fair, bro, we were at we were in Irving at that facility that we had. Bro, we had uh a lunchroom where they had curtains that John uh that Roger Staubach walked walked through, mm-hmm. Harry <laughs> Henderson, Drew Pearson. Man, we had the worst facility ever. And they had and the Dallas Cowboys is is known mm-hmm. for obviously making money. You got a billionaire in Jerry Jones. Uh, clearly, they obviously has really expanded upon and oh, really, it's a beast. Really, it's a beast. Right, renewed their that. facility. But man, I went. No, no, I was shocked when I went over there. When I got when I went to Dallas, I'm thinking I'm about to go to a nice facility because I had just come from from Philadelphia and they had mm-hmm. upgraded their facility, so they had like the bed, the cafeteria, everything. Man, I walked in there with the Cowboys. They got the same couches that Michael Irvin has slept on and, probably, <laughs> and did some of everything else. Emmett Smith. Bro, they had curtains. They had blue curtains dividing so the media wouldn't look in the locker room. Man, I was like, what kind of mess is this? So there wasn't really an environment yeah. for us to be all create some camaraderie, to be honest. <laughs> hey. It was... It was a different environment. I mean, I left from Troy. So, you know, me coming from Troy and you coming from a small school too, when we go somewhere like that, it's like, man, it's big. Mm. It's, it's big for us. Yeah. I, I went from one person talking on a little camera recorder like this famous Amos to 50 <laughs> cameras every day in the locker room. So I'm looking like, hey, I mean, what, what, what's the deal? So yeah. it, it, was, it was crazy, man. But we had the team though, T.O. Yeah, no, we no, for sure. It did not no. matter what facility we had. We had the team, we had the players mm. all day. No. We, we definitely did that. Yeah. We definitely did that. So, so I, can so I, 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 we, we, yeah, I want to ask him because I know when I left, obviously my, my departure was unexpected. Um, I, I in, when I went there and I saw your work ethic and I knew you was like, you said you was one of the chief, you was one of the anchor guys. You was like one of the staple guys on that defense. And so I was shocked. I was surprised that again, they released you or let, whatever the situation may have been. What, what was your feeling leaving the Dallas Cowboys, and now you got to go embark and really make your imprint, stamp your, uh, your your greatness on another team. What was that like leaving? Like you said, that I mean, when I went over there, it's like, you know, we're, we're, I'm playing on America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. What right, was that right. like, and what was those, those feelings like leaving Dallas? And then, you know, like I said, we know what ultimately happened in Denver. You know, the thing is, man, like Dallas is where I started at. I was there for nine years. I mean, it was like one of the things where you gave every single thing to that team, right? And then it get to a point to where business hit, 
right? Everything's mm. going good, you're playing good and they can pay you. But then when it get to a salary cap, the salary cap is a salary cap. It don't matter yep. who the owner is, how much money they got. It's like, hey, we don't have money to pay you. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, well, you guys owe me hey, whatever, $15 million. Well, I don't know how much it was. And I said, well, I'll take nine. Mm-hmm. Give me nine. I, 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 I want to stay here. Give me two more years. I still got a lot in the tank. And mm-hmm. I think I made the Pro Bowl that year too. So mm-hmm. it was like, I, I actually bought out. So I'm still good at what I'm doing. Right. But then, you know, Jerry said, we can't pay you. But what we want to do is um, we want you to test. We want to release you and let test the market and see how much you're actually worth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man. If you do that, I'm. I know they're gonna. Somebody gonna pick me snatch up. you up. <laughs> somebody gonna snatch me up. And I and I was already thinking in my mind like, Jerry, man, come on. And he was like, Demarcus, I can't. I'm, I'm being honest with you. You've given everything. You've emptied the bucket for the Dallas Cowboys. He was honest as heck with me too. Mm-hmm. He said, but we have to let you go out and test the market. You see what I'm saying? I was still on the contract. And he was like, we could keep you here, but I don't want to do that. You you you've given mm-hmm. everything to this organization. And so for me to get respect like that, I said, you know what? He gonna release me and let me go test the market. And this one, Denver came. Actually, Denver, Philly, I think it was Green Bay, and I think it was the Rams. All of them offer like the same thing. And I said, all right, well, they're gonna offer me three times more than this. Mm. And Peyton, you know, we need a pass rush up here, right? And I'm thinking in my mind, like, oh, this dude is scoring 45 points. Okay. It was something stupid. Right, yeah. yeah. And I can rush the passer. And I got Von Miller on the other side. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go up there. Like that, that's what that was about, you know. And and it was one of them things where when I left, I didn't feel good when I left because that's where I started at. That's why I wanted to stay. But the right. thing is, it felt good knowing that Jerry was like, "All right, we're gonna release you and let you actually test the market." Because he could have held me to the end of where it went, I wouldn't have got that big bread. Right? They, they would have released. Me, they would have released you late. Yeah, I would have had no choice. Late. So yeah, it, well, it was big. It was big. Well, well, clearly he had more love for you than he had for me because I didn't have that type of conversation. <laughs> the, sap, the sap sucker got 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 a little liquored up with him and his uh him and his son Stephen invited me to a ho- uh invited me to a hotel and they cut me. So you know my my departure wasn't <laughs> as pleasing as yours. And uh, until today, I don't really. Though? When you left, like what what were you thinking? Like I still got more in the tank. Oh, no, 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 no team. Doubt. What were you feeling? You know what I'm saying? I, I, there was no doubt I had more in the tank. Like, like you saw what I did. Like, yeah. if, you, if you go back, like, and look at my statistics playing those three years, I think it, it probably wasn't until, like, maybe three or four, about four years ago when Dez yeah. was there, he was the one that broke my record for the number of touchdowns in a, in a, in a, in a time, in a, I think, three-year span or what have you. So, yeah. I, like I said, I was doing equally as, I, as good as I was when I left Philly. I was scoring, you know me, bro. I was scoring touchdowns left and right. Yes, you were. <laughs> so, and then I, going into, they had just signed me. Remember, they I had just signed a, an extension. Yeah. I had just signed an extension to, to continue on with the Cowboys. And he called me, talked to me uh, after that season that we had lost with the Giants. Yeah. And the next year, we were supposed to go into Jerry's world. He called me and basically asked me, called like, he's like, how can we get, how can we get over the hump? You know what I mean? What do we need to do offensively? And for me, the conversation that you had, that's the direction and the field that I thought we were going in. Because right. I felt, okay, he's calling me. He's including me to, like, I felt like one, like a leader on the team. What do we need to get to the Super Bowl? I told him, I gave him my honest input. And it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't even about, all about me. I was adding, I mean, if you ask people, you know, you, you've you been there. You ask people in on the offensive side of the ball, bro. Like, I wasn't a selfish guy. It was times I saw in film or on the field where Tony was forcing the ball here and there. And those are my honest assessment. And that was in-house. I'm saying that because we were talking in-house and I'm letting Jerry know, I'm letting guys know how we can win ball games. And it wasn't always throw me the ball because right. I knew my value. I was like, when you talk about guys taking uh, taking up double teams, clearing and, and and having you isolated you going one-on-one that's what i did on the offense side of the ball i knew that when i when i when that ball snapped i knew there was an opportunity for me to get the ball and i knew there were plays designed where i allowed and i enabled other guys to get open so my point in saying that when he asked me i gave him my honest assessment based on what we could do in the future going into the new season new stadium man i two months after that i'm in florida 
He calls my agent because that's where I was living at the time. Yeah. And they had like some owners meeting or what have you. So a lot of the owners was in town. So he called up my agent and asked us to come, you know, come to uh, come to the hotel. And my agent basically said, oh, well, yeah, he just wanted to just, you know, catch up with you while he's in town. This and that. So that's what I thought the meeting was going to be about. Man, I left out there. I left that meeting with no job. 